Welcome back. It's day two of the Mohoro inquiry into NPA advocates Nongobo Jiba and Lawrence Mkhwebi's fitness to hold office. Jiba has denied any wrongdoing after being implicated in a bribe scandal by state capture witness Angelo Gritzi. She says she's willing to testify at the commission. For more on the current commission of Jiba and Mkhwebi, we're joined by our reporter, Govan Whittles, who joins us from the newsroom. Govan, Chris McAdam, a senior prosecutor and former head of the foreign bribery investigations at the NPA, testifying today. He revealed how several high-profile probes stalled after he was taken off the cases, apparently by Jiba and Mkhwebi. Give us the details of those cases. Yeah, that's right, uh, Shahan. So uh, Chris McAdam, advocate Chris McAdam, someone who's been in the NPA since 1997, and he was ap appointed by the former NPA head, Olisin Masana, to exclusively oversee these foreign bribery cases or allegations of foreign bribery. Um, and he did these investigations from around 2013 to 2015. Then in 2015, um, a meeting is held um, allegedly by uh, Nomkoba Jiba, advocate Nomkoba Jiba and advocate uh, Andrea Johnson. And in that meeting, ad advocate Andrea Johnson is told that advocate uh, Chris McAdam will no longer be the head of the foreign bribes uh, investigations. And that will go back to the specialized Commercial Crimes Unit, which is headed up uh, by Advocate Lawrence Mkhwebi. Um, and after this happens, uh, Advocate uh, Chris McAdam is clearly aggrieved by it, um, especially after he approaches um, the then NDPP um, advocate Sean Abrams, who tells him to continue with the investigation. So there's a lot of confusion at this point about whether or not he's in charge of the investigations into alleged foreign bribes. Um, and at that point, um, he says what happens between 2015 or at least at the point where he left it um, and the time when uh, the National Prosecuting Authority reported back to its uh, organization of economic development and cooperation, which is a collective of 36 countries, and basically their prosecuting services work together. By the time they report back, he finds out that the cases have stalled. Um, and he says this is because the police officers tasked with investigating these high-profile cases um, were not updated and they gave the wrong information. Um, and the reason for these cases stalling, he doesn't make clear. But what he does make clear is the type of cases which are involved in here is where we see the high profile nature of the investigations which he was handling some of them including um, allegations uh, that Iranian government officials and South African am ambassadors in Iran were bribed uh, allegedly by telecommunications companies uh, other allegations of attempts to bribe the Zimbabwean government also what he says an investigation which never got off the ground which he believes deserved investigation uh, was that of the net one contract uh, with the Social Development Department and the South African Social Services Agency. He says in that instance he felt the Constitutional Court judgment on Net One craved an investigation. But um, the advocate also went into some details into exactly how the stalling of this investigations affected the work of the NPA. And let's have a look at what he said. What we're seeing, I can't comment what happens in uh, 2016. I was totally divorced. But if you look at that report, Either no investigations are all being done, or there is a denial that the police have any knowledge of the matters, whereas in respect of each of those cases, the police have been informed of the matters and been requested to open an investigation, and clearly steps could have been done to take those investigations further. Thank you. Um, in your view, would you then say that the will to get these investigations going was lacking where? At the bottom level or at the level of the people sitting in the senior position between the NDPP and yourself? It rests at a senior level. It's the responsibility of senior management to identify we are dealing with serious cases and to make sure that those cases are properly addressed. So top management must say, these are serious matters. We must allocate senior prosecutors to them. We must ensure that they're managed. We must work closely with the police. If there are problems with the police, we must take it up through our management structures. Because in this matter, there was an entirely passive role taken. All right, Govin. So given these allegations, what does it say about Jiba and Mkhwebi and whether they actually are fit to hold office? 
Well, the question that it raises is whether or not uh, Lawrence Mkwebi, as the Special Director of Public Prosecutions, um, intentionally uh, withheld the investigation's information from Advocate Chris um, uh, McAdam, and whether Nomtobo Jiba, as the then uh, Deputy National Director of Public Prosecutions, intentionally uh, took uh, Advocate Chris uh, McAdam off the foreign bribes uh, investigations and what their motives were uh, for doing so. So if their motives were found to be to stall those cases, then it would be a negative reflection on their fitness to hold office. But of course, that has not yet been determined uh, by the inquiry. And if anything, the cross-examination of Ad Ad Advocate uh, McAdam um, revealed or secured a lot of concessions on his part about uh, the culpability which he believes uh, rests on the shoulders of Advocates Mkwebi and Advocate Jiba. All right. Thanks so much for that. Appreciate it. Our